Shaking off his hand she ran down the walk. But neither Timro nor Jenny was in sight. She turned down a crooked little path and came upon Timro who was standing facing Figure and Kvakin. Look here she said, walking right up to him. It's not enough that you sneak into gardens and break trees, even old women's and the little orphaned girls. It's not enough that even the dogs run away from you. You're leading my sister astray and turning her against me into the bargain. You may wear a pioneer tie, but you're nothing but a scoundrel. Timur turned pale. That's not true he said. You don't know anything. Olga made an impatient gesture and ran off to find Jenny. Timur stood there and said nothing. Figure and Kvakin could make nothing of it and they, too, were silent. Well, Commissar, said Kvakin. I see you have your nasty moments too. Yes, Chief replied Timur, slowly raising his eyes. I don't feel very happy right now. I'd rather you had caught me and beaten the life out of me than have had to listen to that on your account. Why do you keep quiet? Kvakin sniggered. You could have said it was us and not you. We were here all the time. Sure, agreed Figure gleefully. You could have said that and we'd have given you a sock on the jaw for it. But Kvakin, who had not expected this particular kind of support from Figure, stared coldly at his friend. Meanwhile Timur slowly walked off, slapping the tree trunks with his hand as he went. He's proud said Kvakin quietly. Wants to cry, but won't. Let's give him something to cry about said figure. He hurled a fur cone at Timur. He's proud Kvakin repeated hoarsely. And you you're a stinker. And he swung his fist at figure. The figure gaped, then let out a howl and bolted. Kvakin ran after him and punched him twice in the back. At last Kvakin stopped, picked up his cap, hit it against his knee to shake off the dust. Went up to an ice cream vendor, bought a cone, leaned against a tree and, breathing heavily, bit greedily into the ice cream. Down by the rifle range Timur came upon Gika and Saima.
Timur. Sima called. Your uncle's looking for you and he seems pretty mad. I know, I'm going home. Will you come back? I don't know. Timur, said Gika with unexpected gentleness, taking his comrade's hand. What's the matter? We haven't done anyone any harm. And you know that when a man's in the right. Yes, I know he's not afraid of anything in the world. But it doesn't prevent him getting hurt. Timur strode away. Meanwhile Jenny ran up to Olga, who was carrying her accordion home. Olga. Go away, said Olga without looking at her sister. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm going to Moscow right away, and you can gad about till dawn with whomever you like for all I care. But Olga. I don't want to talk to you. The day after tomorrow we'll move back to Moscow. And we'll wait for Dad there. Yes. I'll tell Dad, and not you I'll tell him everything. Choking with tears of rage, she ran off in search of Timur. She found Gika and Simerkov and asked them if they had seen Timur. He's been called home Gika said. His uncle's cross with him because of something to do with you. Jenny, now beside herself, stamped her foot and clenched her fists. There's justice for you. She flung her arms around the trunk of a birch tree, but just then Tanya and Annie rushed up to her. Jenny, cried Tanya. What's the matter? Come on, Jenny. An accordion player has come and the dances have begun the girls are all there. They shook her and hugged her and dragged her over to the ring where frocks and blouses bright as flowers could be seen whirling round and round. Jenny, don't cry, said Annie, speaking quickly, as usual, through clenched teeth. Grandma hits me sometimes but I never cry. Come on, girls, let's get inside. Hurry goes. Hurry goes. Jenny chimed in laughing imitation of Annie.
Breaking through the ring, they whirled and span in the gay abandon of the dance. As soon as Timur came in, his uncle took him up. I'm sick of your night adventures George began. Sick of your signals, buzzers and ropes. What was that strange business with the blanket? That was a mistake. Some mistake. And I'll ask you to leave that girl alone, her sister doesn't like you. Why? I don't know. I suppose you deserve it. What are these notes you've been writing? What sort of peculiar dates have you been keeping in the garden at dawn? Olya says you're making a hoodlum of the girl. She's lying retorted Timur indignantly. A Komsomol member, too. If there's anything she doesn't understand, she could ask me. I'd tell her. Good. But until you have told her, I forbid you to go near their house. And, in general, if you don't do as you're told I'll ship you back to your mother instanter.